know, when having AD and him out, those are two probably best defenders. So getting him back has really helped us out uh, with him pick and roll. Um, um, you know, uh, just having another person out there with uh, great defensive instincts uh, on that end has really helped us in something that we missed um, at the guard position. So, um, you know, it's helped. Hey, for you individually, it seemed like you were able to match the production that you were having as a starter, even though coming off the bench. How much has is, is your mindset evolved to, to regardless of kind of you know, starting, going back to the bench, back and forth as it's been through the last couple of weeks? Um, you know, just because I, I just got to control what I can control. Um, I can't control if I start, uh, come off the bench, uh, uh, shoot the ball, whatever. You know, I just control what I can control, and uh, that's where I'm at right now. Dave? Guys, what do you think of Damian Jones' debut for you guys today? Um, man, I think he's got a shot to be here if he can, uh, if he can just do what he did out there. Uh, be a lob, a lob threat, uh, got a big time block. Uh, I don't know how many minutes he played, but, uh, you know, might have been seven, eight minutes, but had three rebounds in that time. And, you know, that's a good rebounder rate. So, uh, if, he can, if he can do those things in small stints, uh, so great from three point range in that first half, nine of 20. How important is that for you guys to kind of reestablish yourselves to on yard like you did that first month of the, uh, the season? Um, yeah, you know, it's just staying with the work. Uh, we talked every game since. I don't know. We had a shot well that you know we're gonna keep shooting. We're gonna get good shots, and we just gotta step up and knock them down. And uh, we did so early tonight, and I think a lot of it was us just having good ball movement, having good uh, uh, synergy within the team, getting good shots. You know, I don't think any of them were super highly contested. They're all kind of created from uh, you know from people passing to 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 teammates and creating assists. So uh, just got good good offense, good shots, and they went in. That's uh, two games in a row now where you've held the opponent under 100. Obviously, no Anthony Davis. How important is that for you guys as a team to say, you know what, we need to clamp down defensively. We've done it against two pretty good offenses. Yeah, I mean, it's really just about us, uh, you know, being consistent. Um, and that's that's an effort piece. That's a, that's a mental piece. That's a strategy. A, a, a game plan thing, you know, it's just about us making sure that, that we're, we're holding ourselves accountable and, and like we said, we had a little rough patch where we lost a couple games in a row and, and we were just disconnected here or there on a couple possessions and it led to more, so, uh, you know, we're, we're really just trying to play it. every possession's a new possession and just play as hard as we can and, and uh, live with the results and I think we're doing a good job of that the last two games. A lot has been made lately about LeBron's playing time. He had only 24 minutes tonight. That's a season low for him. What does that mean to you? Uh, I don't know. We won the game. <laughs> if he plays 24 minutes and we win, then I think that's a good thing. Thanks, man. Yep. Hey, let's go to Dave McMinnon. Hey, Alex, I asked uh, Kuz about Damian uh, Jones as well. He said, it, you know, he does what he did tonight. Like, he could stick around. I wanted to know uh, what you felt that, about that screen he set for you. To, open up the lane for you uh, the first time you guys took the court and your first impressions of Jones? Uh, yeah, I've played against Damian a couple of years in college, so I know what he brings to the table. Uh, great rebounder, shot blocker, a uh, lot of threat, finisher around the rim. And, uh, I know he's a good dude, great teammate, so that you know that goes a long way with, with guys trying to make teams. And, um, you know, you, you just he went out and did what he does well. You know, I, don't th I think that's, what, that's probably what his, his best strength is. He just kind of sticks to what he does well and, and, and tries to make the best of it. And like he said, came in and was productive tonight. And I mean, we haven't had any practices with him. He's had a couple of meetings with the coaches to get you know a little bit of information. But other than that, uh, just went out there and played hard. And I thought he did a great job. Indicators for you that the defense is doing what you're looking for and, uh, and kind of executing at a high level. I think the communication and, and deflections are the first thing. You know how active we are, weak side. Um, you know, we had uh, last two games we're playing against you know, players in Damon Steph that, that require double teams constantly all night. So um, you really have to be active. And, um, you know, I think the communication and deflections are the two biggest factors for me.
And then just generally without AB, LeBron was talking about, of course it's going to take a little time to find the rhythm and to, for guys to know how much to step up and where. Uh, what have you seen on that front over these last two? Yeah, we, we sort of tweaked and adjusted uh, each game that's gone by, uh, whether we're winning or losing. And, uh, you know, just look for, for subtle, subtle ways to, uh, to adjust what we're doing and uh, find a little bit of a new identity. You know, obviously you lose somebody like Anthony and you change somewhat. Uh, you know, so we're continuing to work through that and uh, we'll continue to, to adjust. And, um, you know, it's been great to have Dennis back in the lineup the last two games, give us a huge lift. I think Dennis was something like plus 38, if I'm looking at that. 32. Plus 32, just some absurd number. Or most of it in the first quarter. Um, was it just his pace, you think, or, or, or sort of his overall sort of thrust on both sides? Of the I don't know if that's a good word or not, but, but what was it? Well, our, our starters played terrific. You know, I, I think that's a, a part of it. Every time you leave it a plus minus, it's, you know, it's the player, but it's also the group that he's out there with. And, um, you know, I think our starters had a, a mindset to, uh, you know, make sure we took care of business uh, against a team that stole one last time they were here and really quick came out motivated in that first quarter. Okay. Hey, how do you feel about the job you do uh, punching the clock? when you win the game and you only have to play LeBron James 24 minutes? I sleep better at night, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, we want to make sure that we're managing him uh, the best we can. Uh, he wants to be in there and, uh, you know, you respect that about him. So, um, you know, you just got to make sure that, you know, as the games go by, uh, you try to stay away from overtime. You know, that's been the biggest problem with the minutes for us is, is all the overtime games that, that, that we've had. But, you know, you welcome nights like this where you can uh, keep those minutes low. What's the key defensively, uh, not just tonight, but going back to that Portland game, is there been something that's, been, that's worked collectively there on that end? Um, you know, one thing about it, we, we do a good job of taking our film sessions and, um, and applying it to the game situation. I think uh, tonight in the Portland game was two of those instances where we knew that we didn't play our, uh, the, you know, the way we're capable of defensively. And, uh, you know, we watched a lot of film. We broke down some things. We were able to get on the floor, get on the floor as well at a practice facility and walk through some things, um, go over some things. And I think it's, it's helped us the last two games. I guess that you could almost think of the same question with AD being out. If you guys just found finally, uh, it's just they find the rhythm by five games. If you, if you find some sense of rhythm there and the guys know where they need to be and where they need to step up around you. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, listen, when you, when you lose a, a, a mega piece like AD, it's going to take some time. Um, both offensively and defensively, how we want to play, and you know, and, and what's going to be our rhythm, and how we get into our rhythm. And I think, uh, you know, over the last few games, we, we've, we've done a good job of trying to, you know, this is where we're going to have the ball. This is how we're going to be effective. This is what we need to run, and, uh, and how we're going to, you know, benefit from one another. And I also think that, you know, guys knowing when they're going to play, they know the rotations, things of that nature. So guys are just staying ready. Obviously, you always got to stay ready, but you know, um, you know, guys know their rotations, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's worked out a lot for us. Hey. Ryan, you told us that you were going to find a way to figure this thing out because you always tweak your game to what your team needs. And the eye test for me the last couple of games is you play with more physicality and turning defensive plays into offensive opportunities. Has that been the game plan or is that just what uh, has presented itself these last couple of games? It's my job to, uh, like you said, to figure it out and uh, on both sides of the floor. And um, I think defensively I've just been more, a little bit more active. Um, you know, um, you know, trying to be in the right position where um, that it benefit our team, benefit myself. Um, but I've just been, um, I've just been flying around, and, uh, and it's helped out our team. And everyone's been flying around. It helped me out as well too. So, um, you know, I'm definitely not uh, okay with losing. And uh, so it's my job to figure it out what's going to be the best for our team. And you know, we've done a good job with that the last couple games. Yeah. LeBron, before the game, um, I had to kind of, you know. He said that he thought this might be the hardest circumstance um, with no fans, with game stacks on the better, any team founder. Um, curious, when you look at this past month, um, what does that tell you about how tough this is going to be and how do you think you guys kind of came through it? Um, I mean, it's been extremely tough. I mean, you have to literally like self-motivate self yourself every single day. Um, 
you know, and it's very tough because you're playing every other day, if not back to backs, and it's not much downtime. So, you know, um, you have to like motivate yourself. And you know, being here in California, like you said, you know, us and SAC and, and Eclipse and uh, and GS, um, we don't have the luxury of having fans right now. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of games of late, and you know, there's been 1,500, 2,000, you know, whatever the case may be in the fans, and it just gives you an extra boost. Um, so. I'm just waiting, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I would love for us to, to start having fans here in California, especially here at Staples. Um, you know, it's, it's just adds so much for, for us. Um, and also, also to see our fans too, but um, yeah, it's very challenging. And uh, like I said, you just gotta have, you gotta have that self-discipline and that self-motivation um, to know that you're going out there and you just have to be able to use your teammates, use yourself and, you know, and uh, to, to, to get the energy. 18 plus years, LeBron, what self-motivates you still? Um, because at the end of the day, there's some kids out there that are still watching me. Um, they're watching the way I play the game of basketball. Um, they're reading the narrative of, um, you know, will I be tired or, uh, you know, am I satisfied and things of that nature. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to give uh, them an excuse, no matter the circumstances. Um, you know, you still go out there and, um, you know, you still go out there and play as hard as you can. And, um, give the, give your you know your life to the game because the game will give it back to you. So um, I have a I understand I have a responsibility that's beyond myself uh, when I hit the floor. Hey, last three, Calvin. Hello, LeBron. Um, obviously, you guys played Portland in the playoffs last year, and Golden State is a team that, that you know well with players that you know very well. Defensively, how much has that? Uh, familiarity that you guys have, or perhaps you personally have with those players, played into the performances you've had? Um, well, I mean, we've, uh, our, our coaching staff has done a great job of putting together a game plan, and we've just tried to execute that. Um, I definitely got a lot of familiarity with, uh, obviously, with GS, you know, and, and uh, some of the players that they have on the floor because of our, you know, the last 10 years, obviously. Um, but also, you know, with Portland and the series that we had with them not too long ago. But, you know, for me, I, I, I kind of, um, always try to keep myself, um, you know, familiar with whoever we're playing um, by watching film and, and diving into things that they're going to do, and, and just to put my team in a position to be successful. Is it kind of fun when the, some of the, your study pays off in those anticipation steals, blocks, things, things like that? Where you, it's what you study, not what you see right in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it puts you in front of, you know, it gives you an opportunity to be ahead of some plays as well. Some of it is read and react, and not, you know, obviously, but. You know, to be able to be in a position where you can, uh, you know, be there before the, you know, the actual action takes place because you've broke down the film and you've watched it, it helps out a lot. Bill Moore? Sounds like some crutches, didn't it? Hey, LeBron, this is going to be a little off topic, but um, obviously, you know, 17 straight all-star games for you. Do you, um, sorry, do that. Um, I'm wondering what you remember about your rookie year when you played in the Rookie Challenge in LA and what that first all-star uh, weekend experience was like for you. Um, it was incredible. Um, first of all, I'm a kid from Akron, Ohio, and uh, I was in Los Angeles for my first All-Star game. Um, and, and that was an incredible um, you know, moment for myself, for my family, um, to be here. Um, obviously, I wanted to be in the All-Star game. Um, <laughs> still kind of irks me a little bit, but I got over it. Uh, but I, you know, uh, it's just being here and being around Melo and D-Wade and, and the rest of the guys. and. Um, you know, just being a part of the festivity is something I watched my whole life. You know, I was like, wow, how great it'd be to be a part of All-Star Weekend. And for it to be my rookie year and for me to be, um, you know, um, in the rookie, you know, rookie challenge, um, it was something that I probably would never forget. Um, you know, and I got an opportunity to wear some, some dope shoes that night, too. Um, you know, the Zoom Generation One Wheats. Uh, that's one of my favorite uh, sneakers of all time. So I was just like, I was just hyped. So. Um, it's a long time ago, it's a long, that's it's like, it's like the Miking drill, it's so long ago, so uh, I'm happy though. <laughs> Last question, Rashawn. Hey LeBron, uh, Coach Vogel talks, he went all the way back to the middle of overtime games and now maybe some fatigue set in for you guys during that four game skip. How much was a night like tonight needed for, you know, big win and you only have to play 24 minutes? 
Um, well, I mean, you take it for you know for what it is, and um, you know we was able to take care of business. So it allowed uh, you know a lot of our big guys not to play many minutes. And yes, we played a lot of minutes because of so many overtime games we've had this year. But um, you know you take advantage when you can. You know um, you prepare as if you got to play 48, and you know you. you